Hi, I'm Jim Raffle. Welcome to this week's episode of the Jim and Shelby Show, All Things Print Podcast. I'm joined, as always, Shelby Sapusic, here in Phoenix with you. Is that why it's uh, sunshiny and there's a pool behind us? Well, yeah, we couldn't exactly get uh, affordable hotel rooms this time with spring training down here, so <laughs> we opted to rent a house instead, which worked out pretty well, especially since it was kind of a uh, hectic uh, mentally and physical week with the training. So well, Yeah, why were we here? So uh, I'm sure you've heard Jim is a somewhat new in the last year or so G7 expert trainer. And so we are down here at Muto America's facility in Phoenix, where he did his first uh, in-person G7 expert training. And I was on the other side of the table this time, and I went through the training myself, and uh, we just finished the three-day class. And in um, complete Jim and Shelby form, Shelby asked me before the class to never call her out and let her just be a regular old student. And I and I stuck to that. Uh, you, if you believe that, <laughs> I have a bridge for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> they got to see some of the Jim and Shelby Yeah, stuff. there's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It is a show. So, okay. So, as an, and we can cover some of my experience sure. as an in-person instructor. But mm-hmm. I'm actually a lot more interested. You know, we... We felt a big challenge through COVID and even coming out of COVID to get in-person training back to being a big part of our business model. And it, I'm telling you, all of a sudden, in 2024, I feel like it's taking off. I think we said the same thing last year. Um, and the answer is, I don't know. I think it's still too early in the year to know for sure. But we definitely have more interest. And we did get some commitments from our partners, our manufacturer partners, to do several, if not more, training throughout the year and into 2025. So and I don't feel like we were sitting in that same position last year at this time. Well, and we had we had seven or eight attendees for our first Confident Color. Yes. We have nine already committed for Dallas with another two to three weeks to go. Yeah. Uh, we actually opened up some more seats just in case. We, we had it capped at 12. We opened it up to 16. So... Mm-hmm. There's, what, five, six, seven seats left if you're thinking about getting some in-person training for a reasonable amount of money one day in and out. And if you're coming for the GPX show anyway, it might be might be mm-hmm. a good opportunity. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about is what did it feel like sitting through the better part of three days of what's pretty intensive training now that, I, now that I've done it as an in-person instructor? The in-person three-day experience is very different as an instructor from the five-day online experience. So... I'm kind of curious what your feelings are, and then I'll share some of mine. It's been a while since I've gone through the training as a student. I guess for that length of time, I guess the last time would have been the when we had the digital color professional boot camps, but that was years ago at this point. That was before COVID, um, even probably before the merger between ID Alliance and Printing United Alliance. So you know, yeah, it's definitely a different feeling. Um, for me, the if you're asking about the actual class itself. I I think because I'm a color management consultant, uh, my approach to the class might have been a little bit different than some of the other attendees mm-hmm. um, because you know I have a had a decent understanding of G7 going in because you know I've been in the room with you when you've been doing these uh, mm-hmm. certifications for G7 Master for the facilities mm-hmm. and I've seen the kind you know what goes into all that preparation and then actually making the test prints and then getting the entire you know, there's a lot that goes into the submission process mm-hmm. um, I, I, and I guess I didn't know all of that but I've seen you do it I know the type of you know, the kind of time and the effort that is involved. And, but as far as the learning process of G7, I think it, for me, it was filling knowledge gaps. We talk about that a lot in our own training. Um, like I said, I know you're basically a contractor for ID Alliance in this specific uh, scenario. But uh, I think that's what it was for me. I It's like, okay, I know what G7 is. I have a general understanding. I know what it's for. But then there was a lot of aha moments. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you know... That's why we do it this way because of this math behind the software, <laughs> and and it, it was just interesting to uh, it's just more advanced knowledge for me, I guess. For fellow G7 experts who've been through the training, um, I I love the absolutely shocked look people have when 
we go through the graph paper method. <laughs> I mean, we don't do the graph paper method anymore, but we have slides that take people through what was involved in the graph paper method <laughs> of, of G7 calibration. And they're like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes it, it pays to wait till technologies are a little more mature. Shockingly, I found that uh, really interesting and understood that part very, very well. Um, I, you know, in my previous career, um, I was a graphic designer for newspapers and we often created charts and, you know, graph things out pictorially. And we do a lot of that in color management. So, um, yeah, I do. I actually want to go through that process every single time I do a G7 uh, certification. No, <laughs> you know, um, no, but it's, it, you know, I understood it and it was really interesting to see where G7 began and how it's evolved. Mm -hmm. So. And I don't know if this is technically the last, but it's very close to one of the last classes that will be um, taught without the G7 Plus um, edition, right. which honestly, um, as an instructor, I still don't fully understand what it is. I, I, know what, I know what the press releases have all said. And so that's, that's kind of exciting for me that there's, as an instructor, there's going to be new material to both learn and teach going forward because I am teaching two more uh, G7 classes later this year. They're not on the calendar yet, so I, I can't really discuss them. But mm -hmm. And one's off the calendar. It's a private event. But, yep. And one of them will be a public online. Uh, so it's the five-day format, Monday through Friday. I think it's going to be an afternoon one. So it would be 1 to 5 Eastern time in, in, in July. I'll say that. I can yeah. say that much. Right. Um, assuming it happens and enough people sign up. But yeah, we had nine people, which I think in phoenix in february when it's very expensive we, we kind of forgot to factor that in it's it's spring training and it's very expensive to be here um, yeah which the is, flights which is why expensive. we are in a house it was cheaper mm -hmm. it was cheaper to rent a house um through like an airbnb type situation than to to rent two hotel rooms which is just it's a nice house i mean we have a pool know, like in we, a heated we have pool a heated is, pool that's not not it's, that you know we've been in the pool but. yeah no <laughs> not at all i could throw um, shelby in at the end that's okay please don't <laughs> not funny uh, one thing I did do like I when I knew I was going to be going through the G7 training and you mentioned G7 plus and when I heard about G7 plus coming out I thought oh great you know I'm going to finally go get this knowledge and then I'm going to have to turn around and go through another class to get G7 plus right. but what's nice for those of you who are thinking about doing G7 expert training uh, whenever G plus training is available, and I think it's going to be yet this year, fairly soon. I'm, you March, kind of, yeah, March. yeah. So there you go. Um, if you go through the G seven expert training now, you get to go through that training and take that test without additional cost. I think it's anyone since September actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Forth. I, I yeah. didn't know what the exact dates yeah. were, but I, I think it's nice that Idea Alliance is doing that for everybody as they're going through this, you know, even more advanced training that you can. Uh, get that included with what you pay because this is not a small investment to go through this training. Time or yeah, time travel, oh, the actual cost of the class. <laughs> yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's it's um it's a significant investment for people. And you know we had we had two companies that had each sent two people. Yeah. So that's the kind of commitment that people are making to G7, and I, I love it. I really do. I think it's mm -hmm. it's a great technology. It's a great method and a great specification. specification. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing test prep here now. Yeah, no. <laughs> I got no advantage uh, <laughs> as, as far as that goes, uh, you know. No, you don't. <laughs> you might you might have a detriment, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it was it was interesting being the instructor of an in person class of this. I'm going to use the word magnitude. I mean, it is wow. It, I I can't believe how much we throw at you guys in in three days. It's it's uh, a lot. It's a lot, and there's a there's not truly a hand on hands on component. There's a lab component mm -hmm. where we you know we build profiles and we we apply G7 uh, curves to non profiled workflows and and then we evaluate all of that and so mm -hmm. we show you how to use all the tools and you know sitting at the front of the room I think the only time I've ever done any training close to this level as you mentioned the digital color professional where I would do that solo. Mm -hmm. But the harder part of that was all the equipment we had to set up so people could do their own. Yeah, because that was very much hands-on. There was a huge, I mean, half of, not more of one day was a hands-on. Everybody was making their own profiles. So, yeah. and, you know, even when there were, the two of us were training, it was a lot of setup and a lot of going from group to group and making sure everybody was on the same page in the process. And, you know, it, it was a lot. I wanted to circle back to G7 Plus. If you are someone who took, the G7 training prior to September of last year. I think that's the right date, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you want to get the G7 Plus edition, um, the quickest and, and probably most economical way to do it that I'm aware of currently, and I could be wrong, is to attend the, it's not called the Color Conference, but it's the conference that Idea Alliance is holding in, in Dallas next month, March. Right. And you're, there's a, I think it's like a half-day pre-conference G7 Plus addendum mm -hmm. that as long as you're, I think you have to be a current G7 expert. Again, I, I could be wrong on some of this, but my understanding is you need to be a current G7 expert. And again, not had taken the class prior to September of last year for around $1,000. You can go and attend. I believe Don Hutchinson mm -hmm. is going to be teaching it. And oh my gosh, if you didn't have Don as your G7 expert trainer, what a treat. Um, you know, who knows how long he's going to teach, you know, he's, he's apparently semi-retired from what I understand. I, he was my instructor when I took the class eight years ago. He, he is a treat to, to have as your instructor. So, but yet I got stuck with this guy. So there you go. I know. Isn't that <laughs> awesome? <laughs> I told you in the class, I said this and I think people, you know, thought it was mean of me, but they don't understand our back and forth. I just said, I'm glad you're going on vacation next week. Cause I haven't heard you speak this much in a long time. And I'm kind of like gymmed out a little bit, but, <laughs> and you know, I'm kidding, but <laughs> I'm tired of talking. So it's I'm okay. Sure. I mean, you yeah. can probably hear my, my voice is very tired. Um, that, I'm sure. that is, that's a, uh, you know, when you're the only instructor, um, if someone's not asking questions, you're probably talking. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a lot of words, a lot yep. of words, a lot of words. So, OK, so Shelby, what's a better term than the word match? I'm trying to figure out where you're going with this. I'm Com oh, common visual appearance. Common is that visual appearance. It's not a term. That's a, it's a phrase. phrase. Yeah. Phrase. Okay. I thought you were looking for a single word thing no. there. but phrase. OK. <laughs> I know where you, what you meant. She edits my grammar even when it's spoken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. Thank you, Namuto. We really appreciate yes, thank you, you opening your facility to us. Um, mm -hmm. We appreciate uh, the, the use of your equipment, your training facility. They've been really terrific yeah. partners over the years. All, all the support. It was fantastic. Yep. Thank you, Phoenix, for the weather. We appreciate it. There's thank palm, you, Idea Alliance. Palm tree for, over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Idea Alliance, for, for, for providing uh, all the materials and our food during the three days. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was phenomenal. All right. So. Thank you for Shelby for the comic relief all day for the last three days. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what you get when you put me in one of your classes. Sorry. <laughs> so now do we throw her in the pool? What do you think? No, we don't. <laughs> you have to get to the airport. I might actually get in the pool, but you have to go. I do have to get to the airport. <laughs> I've got a vacation to get to. Yeah. Um, can we get? Can we kind of tip people off on next week's topic? Or that it's not next week. Next episode's topic. You okay with that? Um, sure. Go ahead. So we're going to talk about non-traditional design tools and um, artificial intelligence in the design space. And so if you guys have questions about that or thoughts about that and you want to reach out to us in all the different ways to reach out to us over the next week or so before we record that episode, if you have specific questions about what that looks like or challenges that you're facing, facing. for example, uh, there's an app called Procreate on the iPad that was mentioned by one of our clients. So mm -hmm. we're, we're taking a look at that. Um, we're looking at, we're going to talk about mid journey again. Um, what was the third, third? Canva. A uh, Canva is another way that people are getting files. If things like that are coming into your workflow and are affecting the way that you reproduce color, you just have comments, questions, you have other apps you want us to look at and include in the episode, let us know. Yeah. Email me at Shelby at colorcasters.com. All right. Well, now you probably want to get in the pool and I want to get to the airport. Sounds so, good. So till next time. 